Blanc. That's real. <laughs> That's real direct blue. <laughs> Greetings to both fans. I'm Kevin. This is Andre Soklal. Right, and we, we are here with Extra Time TV. Mm -hmm. Today we look ahead to the round 16 ties in the Champions League and also we look at the previous five best round of 16 ties over the past 12 years. Yes. Okay, okay. So listen, narrowing it down to top like a top five is really difficult. Yeah. But you know, with, with our complex process and analytics, aka us choosing the best moments we like, yeah. we managed to narrow it down to five. It happened. Yes. Okay. But first, let's look at the Roma versus Real Madrid tie. Mm -hmm. And Andre, what we have is a complete change in philosophy from Rudy Garcia's team to now Luciano Spalletti's team. Mm -hmm. As you have a team that's more pragmatic and less likely to be embarrassed, like what happened in Barcelona this round. I agree. Uh, Spalletti, when Roma was very competitive before, yeah. he was at the helm. I really think he's the right guy to steady the ship at Roma. Uh, he was the guy who had a ridiculous formation with no strikers back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. And I think it's not going to be a foregone conclusion. I think Zidane needs to get his things in order. Yeah. But I believe Spalletti could maybe pull off a surprise. It will be a narrow... I think it could be a narrow result. And what you must remember also is that Roma, mm -hmm. actually an Italian team, hasn't been knocked out by Real Madrid since 1987 in a qualifying tie. Yeah, that is a it, a lot of people, for whatever reason, in the media uh, believe Italian teams are struggling, and that's a whole other topic altogether. But the records show. Yeah, Roma. I think this is going to shock a lot of people. I think they're going to win this game. Mm. Brave. Bold statement. Brave. <laughs> yes, but possible. Not possible. And with the Romans, they have um, Diego Parati and a couple of new signings that I think would and could be the decisive factor because. How it's going to be, Andre? It's going to be Madrid attacking, mm -hmm. room on the counter. Yes. Quick players like Diego Perotti, Mohamed Salah if he plays, and El Shirari, they're going to have an edge. The, uh, Perotti, I believe, is a genius signing. I always liked him when he was back at Sevilla. Yeah. He's Argentinian, no bias. But I think that's exactly the type of pace they needed. And Real Madrid also has a ace, the fact that Rafa Benitez, they got rid of Benitez. Nobody really is sure what Zidane's style of play is. They know him as the player, but I really think Perotti and the way Roma is set up right now, yeah. they will probably play a counter-attacking counter style of play. Yeah. Probably. Which would probably neutralize Zidane's all-attack style. With Real Madrid, mm -hmm. they have their stars. We know Ronaldo, yes. we know Benzema, Tony Cruz, but Bale is missing. And to fix that problem, it's either Hamas or Isco. Which one is going to go with? I'm not sure, but it will be a decisive decision. It all comes down to how Roma handles the Real Madrid. Very potent attack without even though Gareth Bale is not there. Uh, ever since they sold uh, Di Maria, a lot of the burden has fallen. Well, you know, everybody knows about Ronaldo, but I really think Gareth is a really important component of this Real Madrid team. They have invested in him heavily. He is the man for the next couple of years. And I think if he will actually be a heavy loss for Real Madrid. A lot of people are going to say this. Um, I think Isco is a player that has not been really used properly by Real Madrid. I really like him. I think he's a top player. I hope he doesn't go to Man City, as people have been saying. But it's essential for Real Madrid to get on the score sheet in the beginning. And if they don't, the longer they take the score, I believe that, is, that will play into Roma's strength and Spalletti. Um, my prediction for this tie even though we spoke about Roma, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Madrid based on experience factor. And previously when they met in 2008, this Real Madrid team is better than that team. So I'm going to go with Madrid in this tie. Uh, yeah. And the overall tie, I really think Real Madrid has the components to go through. But I think Spalletti may have that little tactical edge on Zidane and may be able to pull a fast one on Real Madrid. It'll be very close, but I think Roma may edge them. It's a bold statement. Yeah. Uh, you know, on paper, Real Madrid should win, but hey, listen, I think Roma is going to sneak something. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, we now move on to um, Paris Saint-Germain versus Chelsea. Very intriguing encounter. Oh, yes. If you look at, if you ask me this question, let's say, two months ago, I would say PSG. Mm -hmm. Because Chelsea, they win a state of flux, and the PSG, they were rolling 
but now it's a completely different kettle of fish because you have PSG now in turmoil off the field and Chelsea riding that hitting yeah, hitting good. It goes to show you how football is 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 insane. One minute uh, everything's fine. Yeah, it's, it's a fickle game. Yeah, things could change overnight. Yeah. Uh, things were absolute nightmare under Jose Mourinho. You never think that. You think Chelsea and Jose was a perfect fit. Yeah, match made in heaven. Completely fell apart. Mm -hmm. And PSG looked like they were cruising. I mean, a lot of people argue in the French league. Okay, they don't really have that much competition right now, but they have all the ingredients to do well. But I really think the tables have turned now. You know, hitting comes in, steadies the ship. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, as much as people criticize them, they have solid players, and it's no longer a foregone conclusion. I think Chelsea would have been easily beaten yeah. if this game was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But I think now, it's it's anything goes. Um, Di Maria has been having a great season for PSG. Yeah. So I believe it will now be a closer tie. Um, I think though, Chelsea may not have enough to get past. Yeah, but a couple of weeks ago I'd have said easy victory for PSG. They will be very close, but I think PSG will edge them. Let's not forget Chelsea's 5-1 victory over Newcastle on Saturday. And the recent upheaval in the PSG ranks where right back Serge Aurier made derogatory comments towards his coach Lauren Blanc. Yeah. Derogatory is a nice way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> We can't say something right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're trying to be semi-decent and we will not repeat it. Dory, I'll flash it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this shows a definite um, definite upheaval and lack of respect for the coach Lauren Blow. And it also shows you who runs the PSG camp, Mr. Ibra. Mm -hmm. And it, listen, it's, that's super inflammatory. I don't know, maybe it's a, a lot of coaches now use these psychological tactics. I don't know if it's meant to destabilize the other team or cause mayhem. But we'll see how it turns out. I mean, I really think that's probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> not uh, very well, you know, Jose Mourinho, uh, using him as an example, yeah. it hasn't worked out for him at Chelsea because he's gone. Yeah. He's a special one, now he's the unemployed one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'd I, I love to see how this unfolds. I would love yeah. to see how this turns out, the responses. Yeah. Let's get that find out. But with the PSG attack, yes, we know we have Ibra and Di Maria on foam, but the third prompt attack, Lucas or Cavani? Cavani is completely off of form right now. Who would you pick, Lucas or Cavani? Uh, the thing is, I never saw Cavani as a right fit for PSG. I always thought he was a. Always, I mean, you can't make comparisons between him and Ibra. I mean, they both say, well, they serve the same role, but Ibra is so much more dynamic. Yeah. And Cavani is way more static, whatever. As you said, rightfully so, he has not been having a great run of form. Uh, in terms of, I think PSG is going to surprise a lot of people and maybe play a bit defensive. Hmm. That might shock a lot of people. I realize a lot of teams in Europe, PSG is a team that has high title ambitions. Yeah. And when I say title, it's Champions League. So I actually think that they may play a counter-attacking style of play and maybe sacrifice one of those attackers. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would have normally said Lavetti in a game like this, but I think he's on his way out. And he's hardly even playing anyway. Yep. So uh, that's a difficult question to answer, you know. I by the time a tie comes around, put you maybe in China. Mm -hmm. You don't know. I don't know. They seem to have a lot of money. I mean, just buying everybody right now. You yeah. put to China 100 million dollars. Yeah. Chump <laughs> change for those guys. Yeah, it is. And I agree with your point because the PSG midfield. If you look at the set three, mm -hmm. Verratti, um, Thiago Mata, mm -hmm. and Matuidi, they may not play. Mm -hmm. Bratia has fitness issues as well as Mutter. So you may see Benjamin Stamboli or even Javier Pastore come in. But it won't be that dynamic three that got PSG through many ties over the past three years. Yeah. Thiago Mota is a player that a lot of people overlook. He's this guy who does his job silently. Yeah. I understood, well back at Inter, why Jose brought him in at that time. I think players like him as well as Verratti are huge losses. Pastore is a guy very talented. But his characteristics, he's a guy, I think you bring him in in the second half. So to, if they go that way and Pastore starts on the beginning, it, it may, they could possibly get overpowered because with Chelsea's physicality. I, I think it's Blanc has a dilemma and that's, that is why he may resort to defensive and counter-attacking style of football. He may not, I could be 100% wrong, yeah. but uh, it looks that way. And also Chelsea has problems at the back. Mm -hmm. No Kurt Zuma, Gary Cahill's off form. And a recent injury to John Terry, 
leaves him in limbo mm. for the tie coming up this week. Yeah, and all this controversy about, uh, uh, maybe controversy is a strong word, but uh, John Terry possibly not being at uh, Chelsea next mm -hmm. season. You know, these are things, from what I gather, uh, Terry, just like Ibra, I think Terry is the Ibra of Chelsea. I think he runs things. Yeah. Um, all the other big boys are really gone. Yeah. Um, so I think that instability could work in PSG's favor. Uh, these little off the field things is something a lot of people don't pay attention to. Yeah. And they may be able to capitalize. Now the Londoners travel to Paris Tuesday. And what I really want to see is Zlatan dominate the game. He needs to have a really good performance for PSG in a knockout phase and he needs to take the game by he needs to actually dominate and take the game by the scrap of the neck and show what he's capable of. Yeah, one of his many criticisms over the years, as great as he is, is that he's always he tends to choke in really competitive games. Especially in the Champions League. Yeah. Inter Milan fans know this all too well. <laughs> uh, he needs to step it up, I believe. Di Maria and Ibra are really key components. Yeah. to unlock in this Chelsea team because Chelsea are going to come with a very strong organized lineup on the hitting yeah. and I think it will be very difficult to break down but PSG's chances and I believe they will get through relies on those two guys now we move on to the top 5 run of 16 ties since, since its inception in 2004 we spent a long while debating mm -hmm. so what's the best, what are the best ties and the most entertaining and the most memorable ties. Okay, so our top five goes like this. At number five, we have Liverpool versus Real Madrid from 2009. Who could forget that route at Anfield? And that was, I was, that was embarrassing. Yeah. That was, uh, I, I really think Real Madrid should have just, you know, buried their heads in the sand. Yeah. I mean, I really didn't, did not think that scoreline was going to be that embarrassing. They had a good team, they had a decent team, yeah. but it showed you how low things dropped. Yeah. What also did, it shows you where the Premiership peaked. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, you had Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester United, same fans of the league, mm -hmm. and doing everything they can to dominate. But we all know that didn't, yeah. wasn't, wasn't sustainable. Yeah, and Real Madrid is, you know, like them or not, they represent one of the elite teams in football. And to get smashed by Liverpool like that said a lot about the EPL. I was one of those guys who never buy into the EPL as the best thing, but you know you couldn't argue that result. Yeah. So you know that was horrifying, and I felt for Real Madrid fans. Not really, but I did. Yeah. Yes, I felt. At number four, we have Napoli versus Chelsea Ooh. from the 2012 season. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a heartbreak. That was a heartbreak. I really thought Napoli was going to go through, and they had an amazing uh, home advantage. Yeah. And then they just threw it away. Yeah. That's why I lost all faith in Mazzari as a coach. <laughs> and of course, he went to Inter Milan afterwards. Yeah. And they lost, and it was horrible. And uh, I really think Napoli fans got set back a couple of years with depression. Yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. I hated that. That memorable front three, who can forget? Hamsik, Lavezzi, Cavani. Devastating. Yeah. But a second leg at the bridge, it all fell apart. I mean, Drogba, Talisman as ever. Mm -hmm came through at the end. Yeah, it was, a, it was a disaster. It seemed like everything was going right for Chelsea that season. Yeah. They weren't a great team, but you know, they made it through. At number three, we have Inter Milan versus Valencia from 2007. Mm -hmm. Don't let Andre talk about this mm -hmm. one. <laughs> Infamous Beep. encounter. We all know in that encounter you had South American passion being mixed with Italian influence on a Spanish setting. Yeah. So, recipe for Disaster. Yeah, I was I was hooked by that game. I was the, the most entertaining part of that game for me was going online on YouTube when I first got high speed internet, looking at the guys fight after the game. Yeah. Inter Milan had a really powerful team. Valencia had players I love, Roberto Ayala and those guys. And the brawl after the game was probably the most exciting. The game itself was horrible. Yeah. But uh, that was that Inter Milan team should have made it. Yeah. And they just drew and limped out of the Champions League. Mm -hmm. That fight after was hilarious. Yeah. And these guys running all over the field, uh, Navarro. Such a coward, but you know, that was definitely a memorable moment. But he still has a scar to show. Mm. Ask him. Oh yeah, Nicholas. The, what was memorable for me real quick was when he was fighting all four Valencia guys. Definitely a memorable moment. Then my concept and, and think us serious. At number two, we have Chelsea versus Barcelona from 2005. 
<laughs> what can we say, dude? Special one, the arrogant one. Yeah. He just pretty much we love the players. <laughs> the players squadless. Yeah. And then, you know, people are laughing at him because he didn't do so well in the first game. And then they just smashed them at the bridge. Yeah. I, I felt it for Barcelona fans. I like Barcelona. But damn, that's all I could say. The magic from Ronaldinho was countered by that, ter that header from Terry. Mm -hmm. Who could forget? The Ronaldinho goal was definitely, definitely magic. He just stopped and made Valdez, who's admittedly not the best keeper in the world. And he made him look like a complete fool. It's to number one. The most memorable run of 16 tie has to be Manchester United versus FC Porto in 2004. Mm. It feels like we're talking about Jose Mourinho a lot, but who could not forget Jose Mourinho running down the sidelines? Yeah. Celebrating like a madman in your face, Manchester United. We are knocking you out of the Champions League. And then he goes on to win the Champions League. But that run was memorable. I tried to mimic it, didn't do it so well. I fell. Yeah. But <laughs> I love that. I still go on YouTube and look at that all the time. Safe from Tim Howard, Costine bearing the rebound. Couldn't get any better than that. Yes. Last month of the game, priceless. Yeah, and then they went on to win. I mean, that's just a fairy tale thing by itself. But everybody still remembers that run and Jose Mourinho apparently thinks he's a player. Memorable moment, love it. That's one of my favorites and that's our number one. One of my favorites as well, number one. Mm -hmm. If there's anything you want us to touch on, please leave a comment below. Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe.